we shall do some more problems on elastic potential energy of a deformed body in this lecture. Since we have already done some simpler problems in the first class on this topic, you may expect the problems to be more challenging and lengthy. So let us go for the first problem starting from the next page. Now coming back to the question, we have to now find out in part A, calculate the elastic potential energy U of this rod stored in the rod in terms of given quantities which are the mass, cross-sectional area, length as well as Young's modulus. So, let us consider this heavy uniform rod suspended from a fixed support, that is a ceiling I am showing here. And as they have said, the length of this rod is L. And they have also said this cross-sectional area of this rod, this is of course this one, this is given to be A length is L, mass is M and of course Young's modulus is given to be Y. So to find the elastic potential energy what we might do is that we may consider an infinitesimal element of this rod at a distance, a variable distance Y from the fixed point. Let me show that here as well. I am considering, as you can see by this blue outline, an infinitesimal element of this rod at a vertical distance of y from the point that is fixed to this ceiling. And let me assume that the length of this infinitesimal element is taken to be dy. It is obvious that the lower portion that is starting from here up to this, this is coming out to be L minus y. You understand why is a variable quantity depending on the location of this infinitesimal element under investigation. Now, we have to find out what is the tensile force acting on this infinitesimal element. And to find that, what you might do is that I have taught you the method of section. We can imagine a horizontal plane passing to this vertically supported rod passing to the tip of this infinitesimal element. I hope you understand, I'll take it away. But my imaginary horizontal plane is cutting this vertical rod into two parts, one of length y, that is above this infinitesimal element, and other of length L minus y, that includes the infinitesimal element. So, if you divide like this, and consider this lower part only, this lower part, I'm talking of this one, of length L minus Y, which includes this infinitesimal element. So, what are the forces acting on this part? One force is the force of gravity that is acting vertically downwards. And another force, a tensile force, must be acting in the upward direction. Because you see, since the whole rod is in equilibrium as it's supported, any part of that, either the upper part or the lower part, that we divide it into in imagination, they have to be individual in equilibrium. So, if the mass of this part is taken to be m dash, the corresponding force of gravity is m dash g. You can find out this m dash g here. Well, as they have mentioned, the uniform heavy rod of mass m and length l, the linear mass density lambda of the rod coming out to be m by l. So, for the lower portion of mass m dash, this m dash is coming out to be linear mass density lambda multiplied by this length of this part that is L minus y. So I have got m dash is equal to lambda into L minus y, but lambda is m by L. So it is m by L into L minus y. And you are getting here mass of the part is m dash that is m into L minus y by L. And correspondingly, the force of gravity acting on it has a magnitude of capital M into G into L minus Y by L. Once we understand this force of gravity acting on this lower part, we can argue that since this lower portion is also in equilibrium, that means the tensile force acting upward at this cross section must be having the same magnitude. Let me call this as tensile force T. And my argument is that these two forces must cancel each other out to keep the lower part in equilibrium individually, separately. 
So I would also say that the tensile force acting upward on this portion has the same magnitude, that is m dash g given by m g into l minus y by l. Hello students, you got a glimpse of our video lessons through this small lecture. We have hundreds of lectures like this one covering various topics of advanced school level and intermediate physics in our website. They are exhaustive and often accompanied by elaborate diagrams to make concepts even clearer. They are taught with passion and sometimes with a bit of fun. So at the end of the lesson you have a commanding grip on the subject and you are ready for the board and competitive exams. Subscribe at physicsacademyonline.com to access video lectures of highest standard on various topics of physics.